Thanks, guys. Well, here is Valentino Rossi. He won the first ever race he rode on a Yamaha. He drove a Ferrari Formula One car, even with Michael Schumacher's helmet, last week and went only three and a half seconds slower than Schumacher. He is a genius. He's on the pole position here in Spain, a racetrack that he loves and dominates. He's won five times here from eight starts. This is Europe. This is Spain. And it's a wet race. And we can ask for nothing more. It's go for everybody on the front row of the grid. It's a brilliant start from Sete Gibernau. Sete Gibernau is going to get the whole shot into the first corner ahead of Carlos Checa, who goes third. It's Rossi in second position. 23 machines teeter around the first corner. Gibernau has got the whole shot. Rossi got the whole shot in South Africa and disappeared into the distance. Everybody teeters round as if they are on ice. Gibernau leads this motorcycle Grand Prix. Around, oh, out of the seat. Out of the seat goes one of the Hondas. It was Tamada. Neil Hutton got a good start, picked up a few people in turn one. Now they come around turn four. Very slippery conditions there. There is a small river of water running across the racetrack as it continues to rain here in Jerez. Over the top of the hill they go. Third is Checker. Fourth is Tamada on Bridgestone. Then Barros, then Melandri, then Nicky Hayden. It's Biaggi, my apologies, in fourth position. It's Biaggi with white number three on the yellow bike who goes to third at Ma the end of the back Oh, straight. it's getting tight in there. Somebody really got pushed back. The Repsol Honda really beaten up. It was Nicky Hayden who lost time there through the corner on number 69. It's Troy Bayliss ghost going through your shot there. So then Givenau, Rossi, then it's Carlos Checa, then it is Max Biaggi. So it's Honda, Yamaha, Honda and Yamaha. Neil Hodgson's 15th place. He's made a few places up. Ruben Zaus there in the middle of your picture in 11th place. Colin 10th is in front of Edwards. Edwards, I was about to say, just going through your shot. So Zaus up to 9th position. Terrible conditions here. A long way to go. Somebody getting out of the seat. Max Biaggi looking menacing immediately. The man who finished in second position. Only two. That is Shaky Byrne. Shaky Byrne is down on lap one already. The British Superbike champion of 2003. Byrne down and out. Gibbonau leads this Grand Prix with the movie star Honda. He is going to have to ride like the wind this afternoon here in Spain. He's only had a podium here last in 1999. He wants to put that to rights today. Sete Gibernau over the line in first place but nearly 0.7 of a second. Che Julian Checker goes second. Sorry to crash That's it. Just what the locals wanted, Toby. Zout up to eighth as well. Troy Bayliss has got to ninth. He must have played the axe murderer on the first lap. From 17th position off the grid. Get out of the way. Somebody's down. One of them's down at turn two. Somebody is down at turn two. It is Neil Hodgson. Is it Zaus or Hodgson? I can't quite see from here, but one of the Dantine Ducatis is down. Two people down in a lap and two corners. My goodness me, we've only just started. So Gibernau leads the race from Carlos Checa, from Valentino Rossi, from Max Biaggi. That was Zaus on the floor. Sorry, Neil. It's Zaus. So then, it is Max Biaggi going up to second position. He's late on the brakes, but he loses his position back to Carlos Checa, who is really on form. Carlos Checa, OK, down to third. Carlos Checa got his third position in qualifying. He's third in the race at the moment. And there's another one. Bayliss. That's Bayliss down. Bayliss, the man who was quickest in the warm-up this morning. Three people down in a lap and a half. He's almost incandescent with rage. Toby, I was just about to say this is what Bayliss' confidence needs. That's exactly what it doesn't need. However, Seti Gibernau, who has been a bit of an emotional wreck since South Africa, this is just what he needs. Rossi down to fifth. Fifth. The barrels just got by him through that section of corners, and now they're going through this double right. This is where Valentino said he likes to track the most, but right now nobody's liking these conditions. I'll just repeat what Randy said there. Barros ahead of Valentino Rossi. And I'll repeat what I said on the grid, Jules, that Barros' fourth position in South Africa seemingly went unnoticed. We didn't talk enough about it because he worked really hard in that race. He's out of pain for the first time in a year, but not fully race fit, he said in South Africa. A race under his belt, it's a different Alex.
Alex Barros went out in the wet conditions yesterday afternoon and really got his eye in with the terribly slippery conditions. There goes Roberts in seventh. There's Edwards in eighth position. Then Neil Hodgson Good in tenth, ninth position. That's, That's the kind of ahead of Nicky Hayden. Look at this log jam. Marco Melandri going through past Alex Barros. Marco Melandri, the former 250cc world champion, barging his way through and up to fifth position or so. That was Kenny yes. in seventh, rustling out of the saddle. Melandri's going to have Melandri, Melandri, Melandri. Wow. Melandri up to another position ahead of Valentino Rossi. Rossi may have introduced Marco Melandri to Grand Prix racing back in 1997, but he regrets it now. Interesting that Rossi's bike spun up and put him out of the saddle. He lost momentum. Melandri passed him like a, he needed no invitation. We've got Max Biaggi all over the back, though, of Sete Gibernau at the sharp end of this Grand Prix. Gibernau on the blue bike, Max Biaggi on the yellow bike, then Carlos Checa with the orange and silver machine, his teammate Melandri right up behind him in force. Isn't it funny, off air, just before the start, we were saying, who'd you bet on? We came up with some names, all favourites. None of us said Max. How daft is that? Well, there's too many choices. There is... Tr that's Caparossi. Lawrence. Shaking his head, it's obviously about to go fat with water in the works. I would say, oh, Rossi again! Out of the seat. Now we're on board with one of the Yamahas. This is Valentino Rossi looking back through the murk and the rain and the muck and bullets back at Alex Barros. Goodness me, get our breath. This is the lead. It is Sete Gibernau from Max Biaggi as they charge down into the final corner. We are on lap three of 27. Max Biaggi all over the back of him, but it's Honda one and two. Yamaha three, four and five. Then Barros in sixth. But of those Yamahas, it's Rossi's number 46 that looks the least happy. Interesting scenario we've got. Early days here in the south of Spain. Valentino Rossi has got a lot of work to do, but Sete Gibernau is doing all of it at the moment as Capo Rossi goes into the grass. We've just started lap five here in Spain. The leader of this motor GP is still the local hero, Sete Gibernau, ahead of Max Biaggi. Spanish rider leads from Italian rider in second position. Then we have still got Marco Melandri and Carlos Checa third and fourth, but Valentino Rossi is right up there in fifth position. Randy, Rossi may have dropped back before we went away on commercial break, but he's settled into a rhythm now. Well, you saw the opening laps. He was the only Yamaha rider to coming out of the seat. Actually, only the, one of the front runners that was coming out of the seat, and that was a wake-up call. And now he's slow, slowly but surely is picking the pace back up, but Marco has moved into third place ahead of Cheka. He's the best Yamaha so far, but you can see already Valentino's right with those guys. Now Max Biaggi, I believe, if, if he can get by Sete, will start to pull away. Um, the thing that I'm... It's incredible when you look, watch the lean angle. Look at how far Max is leaning his bike over in compared to what Sete's doing. Sete's actually leaning off the bike a little bit more and... Uh, the, the Hondas are staying very much in line. It's not a silly question, Randy. Is that because Max is physically smaller, maybe, or just because of his 250cc uh, experience? Could be deceptive there, Toby. It's a good call. Uh, again, you can see uh, the helicopter view. They're pretty much steady coming out of the race. Uh, it, it always makes you nervous when you go through these puddles. Now, they've just pulled it away from Valentino a bit, and Valentino's got a bit of a space behind uh, to, to Barros and then Kenny Roberts, Jr., well, I can't talk up enough the fact that Neil Hodgson is doing so well. He's going to be in shot in a minute soon. Neil Hodgson in eighth position. He only rode the bike for the first time in the wet on Saturday morning. Now, as Rossi has dropped off the back of Carlos Checa. Yes, it meant... What? I'm just wondering, guys, if he had made a little bit of a mistake, because one thing is it's easy to make a mistake. Uh, let me see what their lap times are, are doing. And Valentino's in the 56. It's 156.8 in comparison to 155.9 to Carlos Checa and 155.4 to Marco Melandri just ahead of him. Randy, a tactics question. Now, Max will obviously want to get past Sete if Rossi is making any ground. Is there any way that the Camel Honda people can tell Max where, where Rossi is? 
at this stage of a race like this? Well, I'll read what Max's signboard's going to be uh, when they get ready to complete this lap. But um, the, the, the other thing that's very, very difficult, but most people don't think, is Sete has a clear road in front of him. Sete doesn't have any, any overspray. The one thing that's different when you're maybe ri driving in a Formula One car when you have rain, when you're tucked in on these motorcycles, the shield is bas basically in, in parallel with the, with the ground, and a lot of water tries to enter the shield. So if it's imperative for Max to try to get by to have a clearer road, but Sete's slowly but surely picking up this pace. Uh, Randy Makoto Tamada, the teammate to Max Biaggi, he's in the pits and here he is on screen. Now he's with the Bridgestone tyres as opposed to the Michelins that are leading this Grand Prix with these two. They're and I wonder why he's came in, is, is there a problem? They're changing the tyre. The tyre just looks way too hard, it doesn't even look like it's been used. So uh, they're putting another one in there. Now let me take a look at Max Biaggi's board. It says plus, and they're just about ready to put it up there because they're... I would assume through the Nieto corner, the double slow rise is where they're getting the split times. From one of the other mechanics. Exactly. Now and it's been radioed, radioed out, and it's plus two, two seconds exactly. And that, of course, is over Marco Melandri. So then, the leaders come out of the final corner to complete this, lap six of 27. Sete Givenau, blue Honda from Max Biaggi, yellow Honda. Third position is... Marco Melandri, Carlos Checa, Valentino Rossi. Marco Melandri, little Marco Melandri, in his early 20s, and he is pretty well unstoppable in this Grand Prix. There is Neil Hodgson on number 50. Wow, what a ride to be ahead of Nicky of Nicky Hayden and Colin Edwards. I remind you, he never ridden a thing in the wet 24 hours ago. You don't get to be world superbike champion for nothing, do you? And Neil Hodgson was so angry with himself at South Africa, and here he is really built up ahead of her. She's such a nice, charming, quiet bloke that you don't, that most of us don't understand quite how intense he can be when it comes to racing. And he is riding magnificently. Tamada has gone back out to rejoin the race. Now, the question I'm sort of fishing for with Randy here is how desperate is it for Max Biaggi to push past Seti Givenau? I take it he'd need to know that Valentino Rossi was making big ground before he took a risk. Right now, Seti's not really holding him up. They're, they're matching each other's times. They're in the 54s, mid 54s, in comparison to 55.3 for Marco, a 55.7, and a 55.4 for Valentino. Now, uh, as long as Sete's moving forward and, and Max feels comfortable with that rhythm and they're pulling away from third place, that's what Max is going to want. And then when it comes down to the last few laps, if it gets to that point, then of course they're going to try to make a move for that. Now listen, Toby, we've had a few fans, I know, wanting to hear those Yamahas uh, together. And uh, I'll open my microphone as they come around the, the, the last corner. And you'll hear the first two Hondas and then the next three bikes will be the Yamaha M1s. Well, we're going to have two Hondas come past Randy Mamola. He's on pit wall with his microphone. And it picks up the sounds real good. And these Hondas are loud. Here they are. Then the Yamahas. Suzuki right here. Neil Hodgson, 8th position ahead of Nicky Hayden and Colin Edwards. So let's remind ourselves, Neil Hodgson leading Ducati because two of them are in the weeds and one of them's nowhere. Yeah, Capi Rossi is back in 16th. And after they look at the rest of this, Hayden and Edwards 9th and 10th, Nakano 11th, then Aoki on the Proton in good point scoring position. He's uh, in front of McWilliams and then Fabrizio on the WCM, who's been allowed to race despite not being within the official qualifying time. Said they just took another second off the best lap time. He's done a 53.7 to Max's 53.8. And you can just see there is no difference on the track. But again, they're pulling away. Uh, they're four seconds ahead of Marco Melandri as they go through the section of double lefts. Look at the pace being run by these two at the front of this Grand Prix. Max Biaggi in second position, obviously running full wet Michelin tyres, similar to that of the leader of the race, Sete Gibernau. Now, there are wets and there are other wets, of course, because there can be, as Randy has already explained with Makoto Tamada's Bridgestone tyred Honda that came into the pits, some wets have a different compound and... Although we've been given the sheet from Michelin to say every Michelin runner in this Grand Prix has got the same compound of front tyre and everybody has got the same compound of rear tyre except for Jeremy McWilliams. But there can be even more differences, can't there? There's not just a soft, medium and a hard, wet, Randy? 
That's correct, Toby. Also, they play with different constructions and also the way that they set these bikes up. You know, they take a lot of preload out to make them softer. You can see now the, the race pace is picked up. Let's see the fastest lap is a 53.7 uh, against 54.1. He's, he's pulled a little bit of, uh, of distance. Uh, you can see on, on our screen, it's, it's clear to see that Valentino has now moved up right behind uh, Carlos Checa and, and Barros. Barros is trying to eke back up there. He's only uh, one second behind Valentino. So just a review from the top. Seta Gibbonau leads the race from Biaggi. Then there's Melandri. Then there's this battle here. Number seven, Carlos Checa, and number 46, Valentino Rossi. They are fourth and fifth, respectively. Sixth, Barros. Seventh, Roberts. Eighth, Hodgson. Ninth, Hayden. Tenth, Edwards. Eleven, Nakano. Twelfth, Nobu Atsuaoki, who is a hero in the wet. He's a hero of any time to me. In uh, one of the qualifying sessions, I was down at Turn 1, and he was by far the fastest bloke visually into Turn 1. Now then, they both had a bit of a sit-up earlier on in this lap. Now Valentino puts the pressure on Carlos, and, and go that'll do nicely. Goes to fourth position for number 46, Valentino Rossi, up to fourth. Will he be able to bridge the gap ahead of him up to the leader, Seta Gibbonau, who is about seven and a half seconds away, even still? We are unused, aren't we, to seeing Valentino Rossi behind another Yamaha. Yeah, he's looking much more aggressive, guys, and uh, his last lap was a 54 point... Uh uh, where am I looking? 55.4. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. So I'm sure that this space will pick up. But Barrels, you can see, is closing up on these two as well. We talked at the beginning of the year, I think, of all the Honda riders maybe taking points from each other. We didn't think that there would be any other Yamaha riders taking points from Valentino. Well, let's cut to the chase. The next Yamaha in Velcom was uh, back in ninth position. You know, Rossi did ride out of his skin two weeks ago to win the race for Valentino Rossi. And he it just, th happened, and it just happened to be on a Yamaha, didn't he? He did. And it was Arbe in ninth was third. 36 seconds behind Valentino Rossi. But the testing is coming fr to fruition as Biaggi goes faster again. Fastest lap of the race. The testing is coming forward. The new parts are coming forward. There's another two-day test at this racetrack. After this Grand Prix, Barros up to fifth position. Barros up to fifth position. There goes Kenny Roberts. He's the leading Bridgestone runner trying to battle against all of the other Michelin riders. We're on lap 10 of 27 here in Spain. It continues to rain. This is the corner, though, that is so critical and right on cue. Valentino Rossi gets it out of the seat. The rear wheel loses traction, kicks him up and out of the seat. Here we have a replay. Look at that little river that's running across the racetrack. It's positioned right behind our commentary box, and it's running downhill. And, Julian, it can only get worse as the race goes on. Both Rossi and Checa had a moment there last time round. We're looking at Alex Barros behind Carlos Checa now. Behind these guys, Roberts, Hodgson and Hayden have a very intense dice I going I think he's on. left checker. Look, he's left checker. He's, he's gone. got him. Done him. So checker's dropping backwards like the proverbial stone. Yeah, low 56s last time round. I wonder if he's got something strange like a visor misting problem or something like that. Uh, it's happened before. Aston last year to uh, everybody. Everybody. Well... And of course, Randy, the heat of these motorcycles, so much more than the two strokes that you made your name on, there's so much more latent heat from the machine and therefore, by definition, steam. It sticks up on the inside of the windshield and then, of course, it's going to dissipate it and, and wheedle its way around your face and, of course, into the crash helmet. There's nothing more bothersome, of course, than the shield starting to fog up. And, of course, as you go through this race, you're starting to get more and more body temperature. You start breathing harder as you pick up the pace. And it really, really is difficult to see out there at this moment. Well, that's something even us road riders can relate to. Plus, you can actually see on, when the camera shows the front of set that you can actually see the mask that he's wearing underneath his awry helmet. And quite a few of them have these masks. Uh, and that, you know, pushes the air straight out the bottom when they're trying to breathe outward, of course. It's sort of like a dust mask, dusk, dust mask, but it's been made out of plastic to completely keep the warm breath away from the, the cool air that's rushing over the visor. Just to, just to let the, uh, the audience know that these two are still setting a good pace. Uh, Max, fastest lap of the race with a 53.6, and uh, Sethi was a 53.7. The difference... Uh, uh, Valentino Rossi did a 50.4.7. He has a blue crash helmet. That's his best lap, but he's still losing about a second a lap to them. As you can see from that caption, Kenny Roberts lost two places on that lap to Neil Hodgson and Nicky Hayden. So the Suzuki rider has been mugged by the Ducati and the Honda. Hodgson up to seventh. 
Right then, let's go for a bit of analysis. We've got leading the race two Hondas, Gibbonau and Max Biaggi. They are six and a half seconds, guys, ahead of the next best rider, Marco Melandri in third, who is riding unbelievably in only his second MotoGP season. Is, Randy, do you think the torque and the tractability of a Honda V5 engine beneficial in these conditions where you don't need sheer top-end screaming grunt and power? Well, it, I, again, it's a, it's a difficult call, Toby, because when you hear the Yamaha go by, you, you and I and, and Julian have heard these bikes going around this racetrack. The Yamaha doesn't even sound like it's turning a lot of RPM. But what we do see is when it get, starts to get to a certain power band that it snaps sideways. But we've also seen the Honda do that. And I mean, it just depends on how much risk you want to take out here. But uh, the thing that's amazing is look at how aggressive these guys are on the brakes. And look at the lean angle. They're touching their knees on the, on the racetrack. We saw how slippery things were in the uh, 125 and the 250 class. You saw Valentino just there snaking the bike a little bit around. He's, he knows. He's getting the signboard. 53.5 for Sete as they cross the line. 53.5 for Max Biaggi. And then the rest of these guys, the Yamahas, uh, Marco, Valentino, 54s, and then uh, Alex Barros. Amazing lap times from Sete Gibbonau. Oh, he's nearly down! Valentino Rossi gets out of the seat and he somehow comes down through gravity back on the seat. Feet off the pegs. My goodness me, we had a moment in the 1-2-5 race with somebody going skyward and Valentino Rossi has been frightened. Well, we awarded Steve Yankner the, 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 the Save of the Year award earlier. Has it already been left? Look at this. Rossi completely sideways. Comes back down and only now will his heart begin to beat again. Happy birthday, Valley. <laughs> and Christmas. Christmas, New Year, anything else? That, I mean, Randy, is there anything you can do there, or is it pure luck? That was pure luck. It was. It's one of the things when I'm talking about. In, in the rain, you've got to pick up the pace. You've got to try to break a little bit deeper and be smooth and get on the gas just a little bit earlier to keep the temperature in these tires. And Valley knows that Barros is on him. He wants to try to get in this podium position ahead of his team, uh, well, even though it's a different team and same same mag of, uh, machine of course with Marco Melandri uh, just ahead of him about six seconds but he uh, he's got a wake-up call and that was it couple of retirements unfortunately Jeremy McWilliams has retired off his Aprilia and also Nobuatsu Aoki we're getting reports of having a problem is that correct okay meanwhile we come round to finish lap 12 of 27 Sete Gibbonau has put in another lap time last time round to be fastest lap of the race 53.5 ahead of Max Biaggi he's got a little slower now but these two are already off the off the home straight before Melandri even comes on to the home straight. Um, Marco's never been on the roster of a motor Grand Prix race before. Now, Randy, am I imagining it? Or is Max using just a bit less track than Gibbonau everywhere? Yeah, it, it really depends, and it depends on the part of the, uh, of the racetrack. Um, but that's a thing when you're following somebody, it's easy. And also, you don't want to be in those same lines as, as that they to have that spray. You can see him towards the inside. Now he's drifting out of the outside. He doesn't want to be in that spray. He's trying to stay out of it, but unfortunately he can't every corner. What are your reference points? Do you look at billboards on the racetrack? Do you look at bridges? Or do you look at the 100-meter boards? Or are there other references that you utilize? Or do you put all your faith in the other guy? You know, a lot of times, Toby, you just listen to that engine, and you know basically from repetition where the RPMs are down the back straightaway to know basically where to break. You can also use Sete as a brake marker in terms of where he's shutting off. Max is, again, looking menacing. These guys are still in the 53s, but Max is looking menacing. Menacing. Oh dear, Mikel Fabrizio on the floor out of a 12th place, would you believe, on the WCM? Brilliant ride, actually, from Michel Fabrizio. He was 10th in the wet conditions yesterday, and uh, hopefully he can score some points for the WCM squad. Okay then, 15 laps to go of a 27-lap race, guys. Let's, let's go for the theory of how this race is going to finish. Max Biaggi is doing a stealthy 250 job. Do you think he's got some more speed? Is he at his maximum, though? Or is he just waiting to go in for the kill in the last few laps? Because these two, as we know, are away with this one. All other things being equal. Go well, ahead, Julian. Uh, thanks, Randy. <laughs> well, I'm thinking back to South Africa. 
where Sete, despite getting third place, said afterwards to friends and teams, I had a bad race, a bad weekend. He was not happy. He has looked stressed all weekend. And the bloke who stressed him was Max Biaggi, who when Sete thought he'd done him and got second place, and it's going to be just like last year, I'm going to chase Valentino. Max came past him and ripped his face off. So I am wondering if what Sete is thinking at the moment, as we look at Neil Hodgson, who's now behind Hayden, but still in front of the American Honda rider, Colin Edwards. Neil Hodgson riding a hell of a Grand Prix, only his second MotoGP race. The World Superbike Champion, of course, was in 500cc racing before. Max's heart is letting Sete go. That's my opinion. Randy, what do you think? Well, t you know, talking about these two in the race, we've got 14 laps. They're on the 14 lap to go sign. Uh, you know, the one thing is Sete doesn't know where he's good or bad in comparison to what Max is seeing. And so, but the, the, the difference is in the dry, you might want to let your rider uh, who's battling with you out there go by. But in the rain conditions, I think you just want a clear track in front of you. The other thing is with these two pushing each other and the angle that they're doing, the race pace is uh, slowed down to 55.2. To me, it's raining a bit harder. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's raining quite a bit harder, guys. So the pace is slowed down by a second, a good second and a half, nearly two seconds. And you can see more, more and more standing water. It's a bad thought, but the uh, the other thing is I I might see Ma we might be seeing Marco Melandri Bay victory here if uh, something happens with these two. Well, we've seen it already today without giving the result away of the 125cc race. Exactly the same weather conditions happened through the 125 race earlier today here in Spain. And many people went down at turn four. That's the corner after where we saw Valentino Rossi fall, or nearly crash, should I say, a couple of laps ago. This is turn one. Then we've got turn two, the hairpin, and it's very, very difficult indeed. Yes, I know that the Jerez racetrack has been resurfaced, and it's got giving a lot of grip. They've got a lot of bumps out of the place. They've updated the, uh, the area around the racetrack. But the corner behind our commentary box is lethal. Absolutely. Tamara back into the pits, I'm afraid. And uh, but Fabrizio on the WCM has got back in the race. He can smell a point. Neil Hodgson doing a sterling job after his machine broke down in South Africa race one a couple of weeks ago of this 2004 MotoGP Championship. Well, isn't this getting exciting? Look at the difference that Sete Jibba now has put into Max Biaggi in just one lap. You'll remember a lap ago, Max was right up with him at the beginning of that straight. OK, what, what I think might be going on, Toby, is Sete's board from the last lap said last lap 12 plus zero Biaggi. Then below that it said plus plus 8.2, that's showing him where third place is. So he knew at the lap time he was doing at 53s, he could slow down the pace to see. Now he's trying to break it again. This is the signboard, as I just said, what, what uh, Sethi is going to get right now. I don't know if you can get near anybody from Telefonica Honda, the, the crew that run Sete Gibbonau, who's leading this Grand Prix, Randy. I don't know if you can speak to his chief engineer or if you dare go oh, near yeah, them. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, you, pile in. I mean, ask him. Maybe they were, maybe their rain dance worked last no, night. The, 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 the problem is even Fausto Grassini is sitting in the mi middle of them, and they're just incredibly uh, focused on, on all those monitors in the, in the front there. Bad news again for Proton. Curtis Roberts has gone up pit lane. So both the Protons now back in the hutch. Now, I still get this feeling. I, I, I stand, of course, to be corrected by people who know better than me, like Randy. But I just get the impression that Max is being ultra cruel. I think he's been broken in the last couple of laps. I think Sete is up the pace. I've got, I've got Fausto here. Fausto, a fantastic race. Yeah, it's a uh, fantastic race, but it's uh, is long, eh? it's very, 12 uh, lap is more. Okay, I know you're very nervous to watch the race, I'll let you watch. But it's, it's difficult, this condition is very, very difficult, it's sure it's more long a race. Ciao, grazie. Well, Boy, it's really throwing it down, guy. I can't tell you how hard it's raining in this pit lane. So that means those puddles are going to really start filling up, Tobe. 
Yeah, they will. And of course, it's only going to be bad news for the leaders of the race as they... Oh, Max Biaggi takes the lead. Max Biaggi takes the lead here on lap 16 of 27. Is he mindful because it's raining that he wants to lead in case they stop the race? He's thinking about Le Mans a year ago when they red flagged it and he was second. Two years ago, I mean. Now, this is the puddle and that's what caught out Sete Gibbonat and Look Max Biaggi. Both of them getting really sideways through that big puddle. That's the dangerous area that we've seen in the smaller classes. Now, I remind you that if they stop the race, unlike 125 and 250, we will always have 27 laps. Unless it's too dangerous, in which case they'll call it a race. And if it's stopped before two-thirds distance, it's half points. After two-thirds distance and it's dangerous, well, that's a result. I'm there is a replay of Max taking the lead. I'm absolutely with you that Max is thinking this could be red flag territory. I need to be leading. He's thinking ahead. He's thinking Typical ahead. Typical Max. And it might be to it's no use stopping it and saying restart it in the same conditions. If you stop it, you stop it. That, that's it. And Sete Gibber now is going to be mindful of that as well. Real ding-dong stuff here in Spain as the rain continues to pour down upon this 2.7-mile racetrack. How do they do it? Randy, you obviously stopped racing. You were a brilliant wet-weather rider. You probably even wonder how you did it even now. Exactly, Toby. And listen, you feel for the guys out there, but you also know the pressure they're under to win. I just talked to Jeff, one of the uh, earner officials, walking down the pit lane, and I said, is there anything that they're t thinking in the radios of slowing this, stopping this race? Uh, maybe three-quarters this is. He said, absolutely no chatter whatsoever to stop this race. Sete Gibber now lifting the front wheel under sheer power and acceleration from the movie star Honda. That is the amount of grip that those wet Michelins are giving him. Hodgson seventh in front of Carlos Checa. That is a result for Neil This Hodgson. is what Neil needs, a race like this, to really put his confidence back up to where we know it should be. And uh, oh, I can't. Oh, Max goes wide and Sete takes him back. And the Spanish crowd get to their feet once more. Soggily. Yes, that's only because they're not sitting down anymore because their grandstand seats are awash. Look at the amount of water that's being kicked up from the, the rear wheel. It's a, a white spray that trails about two or three meters, six to ten feet back. And look at the amount of puddles that are forming. This is getting into a very dangerous area because they're still leaning over quite a long way. The one thing is, you guys know, these puddles start to form on the sides of the racetrack and it's almost like a riverbank. They they break and then the stream of water comes across and it gets worse and worse. Let me tell you, this rain isn't holding up whatsoever. Yes, it's absolutely pouring. And here is a replay of Sete Gibbonau take retaking the lead of this Spanish Grand Prix ahead of Max Biaggi who just went a little bit too far and deep on the brakes. Well, whatever happens in this Grand Prix, I hope that they all get to the finish and it's, that, it's ban that it's a clean race, Jules. Better news for Banbury. Uh, I wrote Nobu Aoki off too early. He's back out there 14th place couple of points at the moment so there's still a long way to go in this race lap 18 has just started of 27 here in Spain Sete Gibernau the Spanish rider is leading it but he's still got nine laps to go can he win it to hold back time for your bike. Welcome back here to Spain. Oh no! Neil Hodgson retires out of the race with a mechanical problem. I don't believe it. Neil Hodgson running up in seventh position, the best Ducati by far here in race day, has retired out of the race. I'm almost speechless. No jokes, please. Boy, you can see the eyes on set. They focus really hard. And uh, coming onto the front straightaway, it started to snake a bit. Uh, while we were on commercial break through Nieto Corner, the double rights behind the paddock there said they came out of the seat pretty high. So these guys are getting wake-up calls. Uh, the lap times, said they dropped it back into the 54s. They were running 55s. 54.8 for set they 55.1. Tell me, give a rundown to the top 15. Yeah, Sete Gibbonau leads this Grand Prix from Max Biaggi. Marco Melandri quite a way back. Then Barros, a lonely fourth position ahead of Rossi Ditto. Hayden now in sixth position. And of course now, Colin Edwards takes Neil Hodgson's seventh place ahead of Carlos Checa. More riders come over the line. The leading Suzuki, Kenny Roberts in ninth position and then it's going to be Nakano, Abe, Caparossi, Aoki 
Alex Hoffman and Fabrizio in the points, even though he has crashed. Wow, wow. what a ride. Now, we, uh, we were talking uh, commercial break about whether or not this race could be stopped. Randy's talked about it already on air. We have to remember, Julian and Randy, what happened to Esther Real a couple of years ago. I remember that the conditions were even worse than this, and it was not red flagged, so that's just one to throw into the boiling pot. Yeah, uh, it's. I think only if you actually had a puddle the size of Windermere on, <laughs> on, on page, or page four, turn four, then they'd have to red flag it on safety grounds because people just could not race the track. Boy, Valentino's not having fun out there, guys. Even oh. when he lets off the throttle, the thing's trying to snap sideways on him. That's just the engine brake, just using way too much engine brake going into the corners. So look at Seth, they lift the front wheel coming off the ground there. And that's another deceiving thing. Straight up and down, it's getting good grip. And, uh, you know, just these puddles it can really play havoc with these guys. Valentino, I mean... They're back into the 55s, 155.5 to 155.2 to Max Biaggi. Sete Jibba now leads this Grand Prix. He won his first Grand Prix in the wet conditions only a couple of days after September the 11th. That was back at Valencia. That was back in two-stroke 500 days. This Do you remember a, them? This is a dangerous corner right here, guys. Oh, it's look wicked. At, look. look at him pick it up. Yeah, but he's they changed, look. He's changed line. He's actually using the inside of the racetrack, so maybe he, does, he sees something much more clear. Here we go. Here's a view of something. Something. Comes down. That is Marco Melandri oh, from third no. position. Marco Melandri from third position is down and out of this Grand Prix. The Tech Twa second string Yamaha team had a potential podium and it slipped through their hands. That is terrible. Marco Melandri, as Julian would say, if he had a duck, it would sink. That's just, I think that was originally a Steve Parrish joke, I have to say. Uh, he used to use it about Simon Crafar back in the old, bad old days. But that puts Barros to the rostrum. That puts three Hunters on the rostrum. <laughs> well, HLC will love that if nobody else. It also puts Valentino, of course, up to fourth place. The race ain't over. Again, uh, these conditions are very, very tricky. Concentration is, is imperative uh, to, to be able to bring these bikes home. Look at how shiny and glassy it is in that area. That's where Marco just crashed. Can you remember racing in, I'm sure you can, but is there one race that you raced in the, that stands out with wet conditions, Randy? Spa, Frankishan, you know, you had uh, a tremendous, you can see John Hopkins just getting lapped there by the two leaders. Uh, Frankishan used to be a, a horrendous race in the rain, Toby, as you uh, know very well, the racetrack. The, uh, the mountainous areas, you know, the waterfalls that were coming across the racetrack was just incredible. And of course, the longer the racetrack, the more waterfalls you have, the difficult it is. Seto's lead up to 0.82 of a second that time round. Is this... Uh where we have to say that Max Biaggi has decided the game's not worth the candle, but a good safe 20 points. The thing is, sometimes we don't see it on screen, but I'm sure they're getting a wake-up call. Let's hopefully we can see this shot out of turn four where Sete was taking a lower line. Here's Barros just coming down the front straightaway. That's how far he is. Barros is just crossed the line, and Sete's on the back straightaway. Unbelievable lead that the leading two riders have. Yes, uh, quite stunning, quite stunning advantage just, that the two have. There goes Nicky Hayden, he's fifth, Randy. Yeah, just to tell you, this, the, the lap times, 55, 55, and then you have Barrels, 57, 59 for Valentino, 58 for uh, Nicky Hayden. And Nicky, I believe, is seven seconds behind uh, Valentino. Valentino, of course, will see that and just knows that he can slow it up if he wants to. A 27-second lead of these two over third position. 27 seconds, that's quarter of a lap. Look at the we've only been we've only been racing 38 minutes you can see the amount of rain in some of our camera shots toby they're just falling straight down this is another tricky part you see the bike snapping across and that's just because of the puddles that are forming well the, the, the garage yeah. the in, into the garage that uh, run sete jibba now and not only is he consolidating his lead sete jibba now He's remembering that, and there's one other comment that we haven't reported from South Africa after the race. I got third position, got the 16 points. It's more points than I had this time last year. After the first race of the uh, 2003 season. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Yeah. Championship, championship, yeah. championship. However, we were all a bit worried about Seti's uh, mental strength this weekend. He appeared to be letting things that have happened this year get to him, but he is come back in the finest possible way in this race. 
Yes, even this morning when he got off the bike, he was shaking his head with the amount of uh, d kind of disgusted uh, the way the bike felt, and he hasn't really been feeling too comfortable, and maybe he's uh, picked up on some pointers from Valentino with his little white lies and kind of showing himself looking a little bit down, but knowing that he was very much up in this race. Yes, one thing that Seth Ejipa now did in South Africa before the race was say, well, he was very honest, let's cut to the chase. I haven't really got this right, I haven't really got something else right, and something else either doesn't really fit with my race strategy. He said similar things yesterday, and the thing about psychological racing before you actually put your crash helmet on is that you, you've got to stop the other guy sleeping. You've got to make him wake up just an hour earlier just to annoy him. No, it's true. Yeah, you've got to have him worried about you. That's Correct. what, that's what uh, it comes down to. Even though you may be nowhere yourself. I had that red wrong there, Toby. Nicky is only 2.9 seconds behind Valentino, I believe, on the racetrack. Correct, Randy. And he's gaining. So Valentino could have another Honda piling in in front of him. There's a little Repsol Honda uh, yes. <laughs> case study and for you. And there is certainly a lot of pressure in that Repsol Honda pit from the very senior men from head office back in Japan. Yeah. Not just to win races, but to beat Valentino. They are getting... Uh, Serious pressure. Just a quick shout again, if I may, for the WCM lads. Fabrizio, who's been on the floor, is in 12th place in front of Alex Hoffman, Nobu Waioki and John Hopkins. That's look, not bad. Look at the pace that Sete Gibbonau has done. He's really begun to break Max Biaggi on this lap. His advantage over the Roman was 0.6 of a second last lap. Now, as he breaks the timing beam, it is going to be... 1.5 seconds, he's pulled a second in one lap, and we've got five laps to go here in Spain. The rain continues to pour out of the leaden grey skies above us here. Third position is still Alex Barros, seemingly miles behind. Well, That's I'm nothing to say that Barros is doing anything wrong. It's, it's just to say that these two, and again for the second race in a row, guys, Max Biaggi is riding possessed. Alex, somebody is just a little bit quicker. And Alex, a streamer of water guys behind the bike. Look at how much water is just laying on that racetrack. And again, it's very, very dangerous in these areas. Very, very tricky conditions. Uh, uh, look, look at the look at the vapor trail that's <laughs> that's coming from these bikes. It's incredible. And then Sete's really, really on it now. Um, he's been very consistent. He's back into 54s. Max in the middle 55s. Maybe he's decided that's all he's prepared to do. Yeah, Alex Barros, just back to him for a second. Ninth on the grid, 1.3 seconds behind pole time. Less than five laps to go here in Spain. Sete Jibba now picking off another lapped rider. Nobuatsu not had a good race at all, but the Team Roberts V5 machine did get to the end of the South Africa race. It did 28 laps. It never done five going into the race consecutively. We are on lap 23 of 27. Leading this race, Sete Gibbonau by about a second and a half over the yellow camel Honda of Max Biaggi. Third is Repsol Honda, Alex Barros. Fourth is Valentino Rossi. Fifth is Nicky Hayden. Sixth is Colin Edwards. Seventh, Checker. Eighth, Roberts. Ninth, Shinya Nakano. So Sete, Sete signboard reads, lap four plus 1.1 Biaggi. And here he comes by me. Max Jason, number four. The gap at the line, 1.48 seconds. Effectively, no change. And as you said, Tubby, I think you've uh, drawn a good parallel with South Africa. That Max has ridden wonderfully, but he's just found again on the day one other rider prepared to take it to the next level. It may be that the ever-calculating Roman Emperor has said, well... 20 points last time, 20 points this time, I should be leading the championship with that, and that will do him, because next time out is Le Mans, he goes well there, why not take the 20 points, and I'm not saying he's running a risk-free strategy, I'm saying he's not going to take too many, mm. now here's Rossi and Hayden, got a uh, race here, and Hayden is definitely under pressure from his pit, not to ease off. <laughs> but to get him, he's under all, there's probably bounty money on him. Yes, there goes Colin Edwards through his shot, and Carlos Checa, that's sixth and seventh places respectively for the American and the Spaniard, Honda and Yamaha. Back with the leaders.
Zeta Gibernau, four race victories last year. Max Biaggi, two race victories last year. Zeta Gibernau, second in the championship last year. Max Biaggi, third in the championship last year. But very quiet through the year, Max, wasn't he? His first year back with Honda after his Yamaha years. And we didn't really hear that much from him. It was like he was just keeping his head down and assembling his, uh, his troops for this campaign. Nicky was only 0.8 of a second behind. That's what his lap board said. Uh, says plus 8.6, so he makes him feel comfortable. He ain't comfortable being behind Valentino, his ex-teammate. He's probably getting nervous, do you think? Nervous? No, he's focused. Well, Nicky Hayden went back again to Kentucky in America last weekend. Had a bit of fun at home with his brothers and his friends. Once more jumping on a bike. Having a bit of fun on a flat track. Can't imagine it was as wet as this. Right then, leaders up with some back markers now. This is going to be an interesting uh, way to thread a needle, isn't it? Seta Gibernau, round turn two. Who's he got ahead of him? Loris Caparossi. Yes, he has. Caparossi in 12th position. Lapping point scorers. Lapping a works Ducati. Unbelievable. Seta Gibernau giving himself an enormous amount of room. Caparossi gets passed by Concorde. <laughs> Round the outside. Caparossi mugs Arve at the same moment. But more importantly, Seta Gibernau got past the riders before the longest radius corner on the racetrack. And he's put Biaggi back another few tenths. Watching the braking area, Max Biaggi. Look at this. Just going right past. Loris Caparossi, but Loris is probably very wise in what was going on and just moved over to the side. You see uh, Fabrizio taking a long look over his shoulder to make sure that they're out of the way, which is great. For, Rod Fabrizio, Rod Randy's in 10th place on the WCM. How do you read that one? Perfect. <laughs> I mean, uh, again, you know, the team... Uh, the team has been struggling, of course, to try to put money together to get to South Africa, and then finally to get to here, and they had uh, Chris Burns. Unfortunately, Chris got hurt and didn't qualify, and... Listen, this is what they need to get a sponsor, get some points. Well said, sir. And Chris Burns, what an they could, there must have been somebody more unlucky at some point in time. I'm just not sure who it is. Yes, I don't think I'll ever meet him either. So then, Sete Gibernau got just over two laps to go, really hanging it out to Sete Gibernau as he comes through the quick right-hander. There is the second-place man, Max Biaggi. He was 1.2 seconds behind the Spaniard. The last time they broke the timing beam on the home straight, this time with two laps to go, just over five miles, it's 2.2 seconds. Unless Max Biaggi sprouts wings, this one is looking to go towards Sete Gibernau, who is going to have to ride one of the most amazing laps, last couple of laps of his career. And it's going to be... Second to the... They're going to be level on points come the end of the race a quick mental arithmetic in the championship oh he's won't if he keeps doing that yes listen he again he's changed his lines you see how much earlier he's going through the corner he's staying very tight to the inside through there picks it up and then lets it squirm where we've seen numerous times where the guys are still too far leaned over and does it seth he's actually starting to pick this bike up with a lap and a half to go guys seth shipper now doesn't win easy races does he no it makes me nervous doesn't it yeah it makes, it makes us all nervous Unbelievable pace that Sete Gibernau is setting, and, and he's the, keeping it together. This guy's still got their knees on the ground with this much water. Probably about four miles to go now in this Spanish Grand Prix. A lap and a half to go. Sete Gibernau hit the front from... Oh! His sister's here. She's not working for him officially in the paddock anymore. She's come with her husband. She will be having the proverbial kittens as well as everybody else in that team. There goes one of the Kawasaki's. It looked like Alex Hoffman going through a shot, and he is going to be lapped by Sete Gibernau. You know, Shinya Nakano, my apologies. Shinya Nakano going to be lapped by Sete Gibernau, who comes into the final corner of this penultimate lap. Update on the racetrack, the battle between uh, Nicky Hayden and Valentino. It's only 0.5 of a second right now, Toby. 
That's going to be a hell of a last lap, isn't it? But Sete Giba now, Spanish Motorcycle Grand Prix. We had Alberto Pooch win the Spanish Motorcycle Grand Prix here in 1995. That was the first time that a Spaniard won his home Grand Prix. And then, of course, since then, we had Alex Crivier victorious in 97 and 98 and 99. And everybody, at least, that's got a Spanish flag, or main, and the Italians are keeping their fingers crossed for somebody else in this last two-thirds of a lap. Well, Sete Givenau has got the crowd behind him. What a race. What a race indeed. And Max Biaggi calculating there in second place. I, I bet you we're going to hear Max at the press conference say, that was as fast as I wanted to go. 20 points is fine. Tell me, take a look out of your box, because coming out of the last corner should be uh, pretty soon Valentino Rossi and, of course, uh, Nicky Hayden, who's trying to go for that battle for fourth. Rossi has missing. Rossi is missing. Where white, white. Rossi is still ahead of Nicky Hayden. My apologies. I'm getting carried away with the Spanish fervour. Sete Gibernau leads on the last lap. Yeah, 0.4 of a second Nicky's got to make up on Rossi in the last lap. Sorry for the false alarm, <laughs> Yamaha <laughs> blue people. Anxious, anxious you were, weren't you, sir? No, I'm not. <laughs> Too many Repsol Hondas ahead of him, Alex Barros, of course. Well, Sete Gibernau won in Valencia at the end of 2001. Oh, does he go wide? Don't do that, Sete Gibernau. Half a lap to go. And that's not Max behind him, that's the Kawasaki. Max is the second bike behind him. Sete Gibernau's heart, I'm sure, has stopped beating by now. He's just got a couple of more corners to go. Sete Gibernau took the fight to Valentino Rossi last season and really made Valentino Rossi wonder if he could win the championship. OK, Rossi got into top gear mid-season and won the championship, but it was Sete Gibernau who took the fight to Rossi last year. He's taken the fight to everybody here today. And Sete Gibernau wins the Spanish Grand Prix. Mamma mia for Sete Gibernau. What a race. And even he can't believe it. Max wheelies across the line. Yeah, that'll do me. Just like when he was second to Sete and Atten last year. That will do. We're waiting for Alex Barros to come across the line. And we're going to wait a long time. Such was the pace of Gibernau and Biaggi. And we're still waiting as Max and Sete shake hands. Isn't oh. it fitting that Sete fell last year on what could have been a championship deciding crash Absolutely. and won this year? Yeah, that'll do me for the fairy tale script. Absolutely. Here comes the excellent Brazilian Barros. Another good stealthy weekend. Fourth last time, third this time. Good stuff. Good stuff by Alex. Good to raise the spirits of Honda. It's a complete whitewash of the podium. Honda, He's happy. one, two, and three. Barros gets the third position. Who's, now then, now who's, then. Now then, now then. Who's going to get fourth? It's going to go to Valentino Rossi, who just comes across the line ahead of Nicky Hayden. Well, 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 well. Repsol Honda.